Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back once again, or for the very first time, to the Thoughts and Crap Show, where today, as per usual, it's your host, Danjo, here with part four of Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition. Hope you guys are all doing well today. As a little reminder, these videos are in 4K 60 HDR, so if you want to watch with the highest visual fidelity, uh, be sure to watch on the HDR compatible display, also 4K compatible display. Um, with, yeah, all that stuff, because um, it's uh, this game's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. And, uh, yeah, do apologize because of the recording method I'm having to use here with direct capture. Uh, the the audio quality is not going to be what it usually is with our other series. Um, but I was like, you know, I really want to showcase how beautiful this game is. Um, so yeah, on today's episode, we are going to be getting into some Machine Strike. Uh, because I freaking love Machine Strike. Um, also going to be doing the side quest, the Bristlebacks. And also, before I forget, I need to switch to my more powerful weapons that I just improved. Uh, the Emperor's Reign. Equip up here. And... Gravesinger Lament, right? Is the better sharp shot. Yeah, that's better, all right. Mm-hmm. All right. Down there. And what is this one? Exacting sharp shot. Oh, because it can still use the standard sharp shot arrows, which are cheaper to make. And still do decent damage. Which we can actually sort by weapon type. Here we go. Um, That one can do standard as well. So why... Oh, because the overdraw damage and the concentration damage, yeah. It makes it worth it. Okay, I'm gonna have to take off... The coils on this one, so I'm not using it anymore. Oh, just keep cycling left and right, gotcha. Same with Forge Fall, although... Oh, it's for the plasma arrows. Okay, I'll just keep that um, equipped there because I don't think I have anything else I can do plasma. Right? Like if I had a... If I had blast sling that could do plasma, that would be... Pretty cool, but I don't think that exists. Yeah, I don't think so. Regular Hunter? No. Okay. Uh, so the Emperor's Reign. All right, let's put some coils on this bad boy. Um, stealth damage, close range damage, overdraw. Right, I'll probably just end up putting some of my favorites on here. Critical hit chance and damage by 15%. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, 
increases reload and draw speed by 25% as well as overdraw damage by 15%. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, agility while falling or sliding in a berserk buildup. Wait, that's what that is? Oh. Didn't they add that status in the DLC? I think they did. I don't know if I'm going to use it. Burning. Wait a minute. Where are my other... Yeah, this can also do lightning. So, and it does it better? No, it doesn't. The buildup is way better. Shocked enemy damage is higher. Okay. Yeah, so we can unequip these. Um, overdraw damage and draw speed increase. Okay. I might take those off of that one. Why does this still have a coil on it? Long range damage? Oh, that has a new slot. Hold on. Draw speed is increased by 25%. That's pretty good. Instant brittle. What, by 3%? Acid and fire, I mean, by 12... Frost plus 15, that does build up as well. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. Wait, do I have other elemental stuff on... Aside from plasma. the explosive ones. Yeah. Oh, because that does different types. Okay. Yeah, like that has purge water on it. Unequip that. Eh, it's fully upgraded. Explosive damage. Explosive damage is really good, but... Yeah, this blast sling can't do it. It's unfortunate. Tie the binds, which... Right, I'm looking for lost coils, right? Um, this isn't even equipped. Spectre Gauntlet has one upgrade. Hmm. And no coil slots. Alright. Um... I guess that's all of them. Okay, so Skyhammer. Is this reflected in the overall perks? No. Draw speed is already plus 65%. Okay. So that's for like rapid shit. Okay, Frost again, but... Uh, maybe the Fire one? Over 
draw damage is already a thing. Fire plus 12. That's already equipped here. That's also 12%. Okay. So I'm just going to do another fire increase because that seems like the better way to go. And I don't see any others oh, purge water. I don't really use purge water that often. It doesn't come up that much. I use fire a bunch. Purge water and frost. Oh, that's why frost is higher. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like the elemental buildups are the way to go with that. Acid and what is the other one? Corroding acid plus 15%. There we go. Whoops. This can't do fire, so yeah. Purge water. I can do purge water? I would just use the other one for that. What is the Adhesive? Oh, yeah, I remember this. I, I, I found it very situational. I didn't really use it that much. Yeah, just acid build up again, probably. Because it is very helpful for enemies that are, like, weak to it. Um, okay, so I didn't get the other two. So Elite Critical and Elite Overdraw. Um, Brittle, Corroding, Agility Damage, Berserk, Burning against enemies in the burning state, no. Component terror. Terror is already super high. I don't feel like I need that draw speed. That would be good, plus 25%. Long range, melee follow up, overdraw. It's already improved by 15%, but I could stack that to 30. Yeah, let's do that. Draw speed plus 25%, and because that'll get overdraw faster as well, so... And I do have two of those, okay. Did that say critical hit chance plus 10%? Uh, I don't know what the crit multiplier is, but I feel like that might be good. Concentration damage, that's pretty good. Um, crit chance plus 10%? I feel like that's going to be really good. Right? Instead of going for overdraw damage? I mean, but that's guaranteed damage. And it was, what, 15? Yeah, which I already have a 15% boost, so 30% boost. That's pretty damn significant. And then draw speed, elite overdraw. Oh, and overdraw damage by 15%. Okay, so that is boosting it. And again. Oh, so it's actually 45%. Ooh, and draw speed. And draw speed and overdraw. Oh, dude. And reload and crit chance and damage. Mm -hmm. So, should I go for crit? <laughs> just stay on overdraw? Yeah. Let's just stack those perks. I'll leave it like that. Uh, Gravesinger, edit. Let's see, we got, again, I don't really use 
sharp shots as much. Sometimes they're very, very useful, but probably not going to use it as much until I get more coils. Draw speed plus 25, yeah, please. Um, knockdown, knockdown power, long range damage, yeah, please. Um, reload speed, probably good, just because sharp shots do take a sec to reload. Stealth damage, yes. Because that's mostly when I use the sharp shot, is when enemies don't see me. Plus, I already have a stealth damage boost, so... Close range component tear, concentration damage, which I think is boosted by my armor as well, too. Critical hit damage, draw speed. speed. We're getting into the not very good ones. So maybe reload, but I mean... That's not how... Oh, right, impact damage just increases your damage damage. Uh, that would be good. Either way, I'm increasing damage, so... Wait, did I already... Oh yeah, I already got the draw speed, okay. Stealth. Don't need to follow up. Reload. Concentration. Percolate chance. Impact plus ten would be pretty good. Uh, I do already have an overdraw damage boost, so it's only 10%, but would stack. But long range, again, is 15. And then stealth plus another 15, which I guess I don't have another stealth one in the very rare. I don't. It's going to be stealth anyway. And it's against unaware or suspicious enemies. So like, any time I'm using a sharp shot, yeah, it's going to be that. So yeah, 15 and 25, so an extra 40. Plus the 25 from the actual weapon, so 65. Plus long range damage, plus 25%. Overdraw, plus another 25. Dude, it's gonna absolutely wreck enemies. Abso-fucking-lutely. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's the overdraw 15? And draw speed? So wait, do I wanna take that off of there? Yeah, I do actually. Unequip. And then edit. And I clip that. Edit. Okay, where? It's this one, right? Yeah, overdraw plus 15%. There we go. Um, then I guess this can have. Concentration damage, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's already got that boost. Oh, whoops. Ground, melee, overdraw. Reload, component, close range. I do have another concentration plus 10%, so...
Yeah. Yeah, I'll just do that. Okay. Um, Skyhammer is already fully outfitted. I guess that does it for now for my equipped weapons, right? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. The outfits. Yeah, I'm going to wear that for now and then make it look like I'm wearing the awesome Forester skills. There's nothing else we can grab. Okay. That took a hot minute. Yes, I did, actually. Can I skip this? Only by lines. Yeah, I know how to play. Um, so yeah, this is Machine Strike. Uh, one, like I said, one of my favorite mini games in any game ever. Um, All right, let's start off simple. Oh, it's she's gonna explain to it. Say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. To win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round, so go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close enough to attack one of my machines. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now, some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. Da 
That's about it for your turn, then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes that can be a good thing. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor, though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. I know I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping. <sighs> no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. Alright. There we go. So, tutorial completed. That's the basic tutorial. But, um... Yeah, she's got three different ones, and then the different challenges you can do. Um... And yeah, that's... In a nutshell, I, this game is so good. Come back anytime, Red. Mm-hmm. Quest menu, learning machines track, talk to Salma. Is this Salma? Yeah, I guess so. Alright. Um one thing I wanted to look at real quick. Is an audio? The speech volume is already 90%. It sounds a little low though, doesn't it? I mean, on my end, I... I... I don't know what the final mix is going to sound like. Kingdom Hearts 2 for the mix. Um, it's probably fine, right? I'll just leave it at 90 for now. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments, because 
Yeah, I think it depends on who's talking. All right. For this tutorial part, because like she does a very thorough job of explaining the game of Machine Strike if you do all the tutorials, which we are going to do right now, I'm just going to increase it to 100 because it does sound a little bit low. But, um, and then afterwards I'll turn it back to 90. But, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Aloy, please have a seat. I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machines. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, choosing the right terrain doesn't just improve your offense. It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's standing on grassland terrain, this terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position, but they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now, the front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you. All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do, so be wary. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left.
See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemies so you're not completely helpless. Well, I think that's enough yammering for me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players would choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, its machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gunner type machine here. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram-type machine. Attack an enemy with it, and it'll push the piece backwards. Like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine's spot on the board. This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Oh, now this is a beauty of a piece, a dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece. A nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set. If you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and... We haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. All right, and that's about the gist of Machine Strike. But yeah, like she said, that's not all the types of uh, strike pieces or, you know, we didn't cover all the skills or anything like that. But, um, yeah, go ahead and do... Oh, you get skill points, but you also get strike pieces? Oh, if you beat all their challenges, right, so zero out of four. And then we get a free uh, bristleback, which is pretty cool. And unfortunately, we can't set our own pieces yet. You open glossary. Here we go. Yeah, so these are all of the notes and everything, all the rules of the game, essentially. Blight boards. Hmm. 
Grassland is okay. Okay. All right. So I'll just do the beginner set because that's what I have Let's to use. Play. All right. So no more tutorial. Get a place our pieces and move them as we see fit, which I am very happy about. Considering we got some tall terrain over here, I'm gonna put one of them in front of that. And probably put this one within range of that forest terrain. You're up, Red. She puts both of them over there, okay. Well, I'm gonna put my burrower, well, actually, hold on. Can I see her? Yeah, I can. Okay, so she can move two spaces. Unless she wants to overcharge or sprint and then overcharge attack, but I doubt she's gonna do that. Plus, then she'd be sacrificing two HP, so I'm just gonna wait right there and right here. Time to make my move. Because I need her to get within range. Okay. Board's all yours. Okay. Um I could sprint behind her. Kinda don't want to do that. Plus... I mean, this is pretty easy. I could just take out her one piece and then not sacrifice any HP. Because both of hers are burrowers, right. So, and then use my next turn to take out her other piece and she won't be able to do anything about it. Or I could stay up here. And overcharge. Yeah, but she might move out of range. Yeah, I'll just do it this way. A single machine left? <sighs> that ain't good. Nope. Oh. Right. That makes sense. Your turn. Yeah, but I get a plus two if I go over here and all I'd have to do is to overcharge. That gives me a four. So yeah, that would take her machine out. Overcharge, and then bam. Oh, I thought I had that one. Nope. Okay. And you have to use the beginner set, huh? Alright. Let's do this! Ooh, but now we each get four. There's some lance horns in there, which fantastic. Um, hill terrain. Which one's hill terrain? Oh, the gray. Right. Okay. There's four pieces of that. Okay. Uh, so for the lance horns, which gain extra combat power from hill terrain, I'm gonna put them in front of the hill terrain. Burrowers, one right here. Hmm. Let's see what she's doing there. And one over here, probably. No, I'll just keep them staggered. Your move, Red.
Yeah, these things are weak from the side, which is not great. But I can kind of... Oh, right, you can only move... Okay, the examples were with two pieces. But I kind of forget about that. Like, you can only move two pieces per turn. Right. Okay. It's time to get serious. That's it for me. Okay, so she's only moving her burrowers. She also has two lance horns. Okay, so we have the same pieces. Okay, I'm gonna block for my lance horns here. Although I could take a free attack. Then I'd have to overcharge it. Hmm. Which might be worth it, actually. Oh, you're weak from the side. And I can actually get there. That would be three. Although I could just do this as a bluff. That's another free hit. Although getting that weak point attack would kind of be worth it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, no, with overcharge, you can move you to play, Aloy. This is fun. or attack, right? Right? Because even, yeah, okay. Yeah, because even if I don't, she's got two attack power. She could attack from the forest terrain, take me out on the next turn regardless. Yeah, that's not worth it. Okay. Well, that's done now. Wait, she can hop over pieces like that? Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, but I can do this. I mean, it doesn't help me a bunch, but it does help. I could ram... Oh, that would destroy her piece. And then it would also damage the one behind her. And then I would take her place, right? And then I could turn. Yeah. Okay. Knocked right off the board. Hmm. That would only be one point of damage. But 
could retreat. It's mm. a really bad spot to be. She's still going to be able to hit me from the side. Unless I go down here, right? No. She'd still be able to hit me from the side. Um, she would waste a turn taking out this piece, though. Because to get that five, she would need both for burrowers to attack it. And with my pieces as spread out as they are, she might want to prioritize taking out this burrower. So we'll see what she does. I'm just going to end the turn. Okay. One less piece on the board. Hmm. Yeah, but you left that burrower wide open. That's just a freebie. That was brutal. If she gets up here, that'd be a problem. So I guess I should rotate for this turn. Wait. Oh, you can't just rotate? Oh, I have to move twice. Oh, that sucks. I don't like that. I do not like that. I could move out of range, though. Yeah. Time to make my move. Not looking good for you, Red. Mm, it's not looking great for you either. <laughs> Although that moves closer to her. That would be two though. That wouldn't take her out. No, I got this. Ah, off the board it goes. Oh, I get to move twice, regardless. Okay. My turn. Mm-hmm. Board's the... all yours. You're not even gonna try to attack? Looks like I lost. <laughs> I mean, she couldn't have taken me out, but, like, seriously. Good luck. Well, thanks. Plus, like, you know, I still can't use my own pieces. It's kind of the biggest problem here. Wait, what are my other ones? Scroungers? Oh, they have three movement? Wait, that is movement, right? Right. I keep forgetting that they have a range of two, like attack range two. I 
time to get serious. How did she move like that? Oh, because they have three and she sprinted. Okay. Still, this doesn't look good for you. Okay, you're done. That is a scrounger though. So it'd be kind of a waste if I use them for that. I could hit this scrounger from behind, but I would rather focus on eliminating pieces. That'd be three, okay. One less piece on the board. Mm hmm. I'm up. That's fine. I was well, gonna say. Done now. Yeah. But now your scrounger's going down regardless of what I do. <laughs> And I don't even have to overcharge it. <laughs> that was brutal. And the scrounger can hit you from here, which and take out this piece. <laughs> I... Although then my weak point is more open than it would be. If I just attack from here, which would be better defensively. I'm gonna have to overcharge to finish her off anyway. So ah, off the board it goes. Yeah, that's five to three. That's it for me. Wait, you put your lance horn. Why? Why would you do that? I can just bam. Oh, that's only four. Still, he can just overcharge it, take it out. Easy peasy. What a hit! Uh, knocked right off the board. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah, I'd rather take out her lance horn. You got me, fair and square. Oh, that's seven points. Oh shit. Okay. All right, one more regular challenge, but we are just about out of time, guys. So yeah, that took longer than I expected. Um, I get a little carried away sometimes when I comes to machine strike but um yeah we'll do this next one on the next episode um really got to get going and wrap this up so thanks for being here guys till next time take care and i hope you all have a beautiful day special thanks to the channel members till next time <laughs>